Okay. From the studios of the Ram Cave, in the home of the Camellias, I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for May the 8th, 2023. We're here to pray for our young people, <coughs> do a short scripture application, pray, get you out of here, hopefully in that 15 minute mark. <coughs> Haven't coughed all morning, coughed the second the light goes on. Um, I think it's the Lord's way of keeping me humble. There we go. Uh, we're going to be in Philemon. It's right after Titus. And Philemon's only about, what, 23, 25 verses long. There's no chapters. And we're just going to look at Philemon uh, verse 6. And that's it. We're just going to look at Philemon verse 6. And then we're going to pray. And I hope everyone is well. Uh, I have loaded up on my allergy medicine as a... Uh, Kelly McCoy, thank you so much for clicking on from Reno. Uh, I man, that makes me feel really good. Uh, and uh, and uh, so I've loaded up on my allergy medicine because the rain has ended, the sun is out, and all the pollen's in the air. So uh, so I really hate coughing on the air, especially when I don't cough any other time. So um, we're going to be in Philemon, verse 6, uh, and uh, we'll get ready to go from there. Okay, this is Paul writing to his friend Philemon, and we know the letter is about Onesimus, who is this runaway slave, and uh, he's encouraging Philemon, hey man, don't just welcome this guy back, but welcome him back as a brother in Christ and not as a slave. And uh, there's all, all sorts of, there's depth to Philemon that people don't get, they, they kind of gloss over, but we spent, we spent about, uh, about a month in Philemon a year ago and had some great interaction there. So let's look at verse 6 of Philemon, and this is Paul, and he says to Philemon, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Philemon 6, that's it. I'll say it again. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Uh, I first marked and underlined this passage uh, in my uh, current Bible, that's around here somewhere. Ah, there it is. Yeah, there it is, right there. I first uh, did this in my in my current Bible on uh, December twenty eighth, two thousand ten, because it just rung out to me. And there's sometimes you read a scripture a thousand times, and it's that thousand and first time that you read it that it's like, whoa. Now I'm not calling it a life verse. I'm not into life verses because whatever my life verse is today, it's not going to be my life verse tomorrow. That's because the scripture is so active and alive. But it is a verse that has had a significant impact on me. And uh, I don't want to go too deep in the weeds. Because uh, when I do, uh, my old boss says, you know, I'm a Calvinist delight. But, uh, but even before going to church, uh, and even when I went to church with my babysitters when I was four and five years old, I've always had some concept about God. Right? I never doubted there was a God. It, it just... It never, it's not like I was raised in a Christian home. It's not like uh, it was beat into me. Uh, uh, I, I just I just never had a doubt there was this God, right? And uh, God existing, being in control, was never a hard reach for me, a hard acceptance for me, nothing to get my mind around. My journey with God regarding God was always more about discerning what he wanted from me all the whys of life, right, that we all do. Well, why is this happening? If you're God, why is this happening, right? Uh, and then also remaining in good standing with him. Because you got to remember, I grew up in the Hal Lindsey, Jesus is coming tomorrow generation where everything was fear of God that you're going to miss the rapture, right? And you wondered every night you went to bed, is the rapture going to happen? Am I going to be left behind? And uh, nightmares and all those things. And so, so this was my journey with God. You know, what does he want from me? Why do these things happen? And how do I am, I, am I in good standing with God? And that confidence wasn't necessarily, I don't think, built into me. Uh, but existence of God was never an issue. Although just acknowledging his existence never satisfied my questions. Do you, do you follow me on this? Existence of God was never an issue. But, uh, but, but just by acknowledging that he existed, I never got, under the understanding of, of what he wanted from me or or the whys of life or am I in good standing, you know, uh, that wasn't enough, right? Uh, so, but what changed for me was when I actively started sharing my faith. 
uh, I had no problem accepting Jesus as Savior. And as I gained knowledge, uh, as I gained the ability to maybe, <clears throat> maybe, maybe, I'm not saying on a high level, maybe to articulate a little bit, um, I, uh, I, I started using some head knowledge, right? And using head knowledge about the kingdom of God doesn't always win you friends or bring new citizens into the kingdom right away, right? You come off as cocky, arrogant. Uh, you come off as uh, someone who is talking down to people, like you're gonna fry and I'm not, right? And you know, you know, the 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 message of the Lord is a powerful thing in a teenager's hand, but the message of the Lord can also be uh, really misused by that teenager, you know. Uh, so, uh, but what did work for me was when I reached a point where I was actively sharing my faith regarding how I lived. And when people began to notice there was a difference in me, uh, you know, and, and it's real, real cursory things. My language cleaned up. Uh, you know, I didn't party. I, I, I avoided every opportunity. Even at a party, I would still not partake in the things of the party. Does that make sense? I hung out, but I didn't drink. I didn't get high. I didn't do any of those things. And and I, I have to say, it was because of my it was first because I I understood those things weren't good, but then also it was because of my faith. I, I had found a faith that that recognized that yeah, those things aren't always good for you. And uh, and but I didn't preach it to my friends necessarily. I lived it, not speaking about it, but living it out. And that was what caused questions to be asked, and that gave me the opportunity. To <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, allergies. That gave me the opportunity to speak and to answer questions, right? And remember Paul's wish for Philemon. <clears throat> it was, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith. And that's what it was for me as well. Because in the sharing of my faith, I gained a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Every good thing we you have in Christ, we all have in Christ, right? Um, because it wasn't just accepting who God is, right? But it was about also sharing, you know, who he is in my life. And then I began to understand all the good things. So much of our Christian faith, at least for me growing, was what you can't do. And as you get older and you realize those things you can't do are really silly things, but the things you can do are unbelievable when your faith is locked in Christ. And uh, what is that? Well, what isn't it every good thing, right? Well, what is every good thing? Well, what isn't every good thing? Uh, I, I would say anything, anything is possible in Christ, right? Now, not snap my fingers, get a million dollars, not snap my fingers and and someone who's got cancer, I'm gonna heal or anything like that, or, you know, it, it's not like that, but it's this, this optimism of knowing that God is ever present. And this, unfortunately, maybe because of how I lived, uh, I'm talking a little bit about me too much today, but it's been described in me as arrogance, overconfidence, cockiness. And uh, and I've been accused of all those things, you know, and I don't need any amens in the comment box when people see this later uh, in regards to, to me being arrogant, confident, or cocky uh, and, uh, and stuff. But when I became confident in the Lord, I just lived that way. And what this really is, is optimism in Christ, not because of my character, but because of his presence in Christ, I do have a boundless optimism. No matter what the election turn out, no matter, I'm going to tell you folks, I've got into the world fatigue from the Christians and the non-Christians. I mean, it's a joke after a while, all right? And it's such a joke that it doesn't affect my optimism. In fact, it often makes me laugh, but... Uh, but so I don't get turned, you know, worn out or cry when I think, you know, someone says we got 10 years to save the planet, but I heard the same 10 years 40 years ago. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, in Christ, I have boundless optimism, right? And that doesn't mean I'm Pollyanna. <laughs> it doesn't mean I don't have hard days and weeks. It doesn't mean I, I, I don't see people going through hardship, but not to have confidence in the spirit that the scripture says dwells within me and dwells within all of us that believe in him, that is to work against my very nature. It's like being right-handed 
and then deliberately trying to do everything left-handed when we are naturally right-handed. It's like trying to perform a song in front of a room full of people when our best ability is to sit and appreciate that song. It's like trying to write when I know I'm a really good reader, okay? It's like trying to speak when I'm better with a hammer and, with a hammer and measuring stick in my hand. Uh, why am I gonna do something against the nature that's been instilled with me? And with God's spirit instilled in me and in all of us, I, I, I have optimism. I, I, I see the proverbial silver lining in every cloud. I see an opportunity in every situation. It doesn't mean I'm always successful, but it is the disposition of my life. And how could I live in hopelessness or doubt when the spirit of the creator of all things dwells within me? How can any of us live like that? Knowing that I have it, what I have in Christ allows me, us, to walk into the darkest and scariest places and situations, knowing we won't fall, fail, or have fear if we remain true to him. And, and, and I know that that sounds crazy, but, but when I'm actively sharing my faith, I also begin to understand, I gain a full understanding of every good thing. And I'm able to go into the foxhole or to the ICU. I'm able to walk into to places that I don't ever want to be, where someone's lost a loved one. And, and I know <clears throat> that if I'm trusting in him, I won't fall, fail, or have to fear. Uh, it doesn't make it easy, uh, but, but I have this confidence. We all should have this confidence. I know many of you do too. That's just some of it, but we learn none of this until we are actively sharing out our faith. You know, it's not enough to just acknowledge God. At some point you have to actively share your faith and it's in the, the process of sharing that faith that you begin to understand all the good that you have, that you have access to in Christ. <clears throat> it kind of reminds me of Malachi chapter three, verse 10. That's the, the tithing message scripture. When pastors want you to tithe more or to tithe, uh, they, uh, they, they, uh, they, you know, bring the, you know, full, you know, tithe into the storehouse and God will open the floodgates of heaven. I'm just working this off the top of my head, but it is one of the few times where God says, test me in this. You know, Jesus says, don't put the Lord, your God to the test in regards to showy things, but to put the Lord, your God to the test in terms of faith. <clears throat> and, uh, and, you know, taking away the, the whole tithing concept, when I read this passage, it's like, you know, what? I'm going to actively share my faith and I'm going to test the Lord in this. So I can do those things that emotionally, uh, you know, uh, intellectually seem impossible. I'm not going to say physically because I can't fly. I can't do those things. I can't, I wish I could touch somebody and they'd be healed. Uh, but I am going to be able to, to bring his word into a dark place with me and a place that's hostile. Uh, if you've ever done a, a, a funeral where 200 people are looking back at you and they have no faith and they are just angry people and they would just gladly kick you out as anything, you know that the only, the only thing that gives you optimism in that moment is that the spirit of the Lord dwells within you. Been there, done that, bought that t-shirt. Um, how marvelous would it be if we raised our young people in the church not to follow the herd, not to be activists, but to have confidence, the confidence of their faith and in living it out and sharing it so they can discover every good thing there is to have in Christ. That's why we pray for our young people. That's why we do youth ministry. That's why we, we, we do these things because we want them to have the confidence of their faith because everyone's going to rattle their faith. Have you ever noticed the enemy doesn't necessarily uh, you know, attack all of our, our young people physically. The enemy tries to bring in despair and destroy faith. And if, if our young people have the confidence of their faith and they just live it out, sooner or later people are going to ask questions. Why are you different? Why are you hopeful? And then they can answer and they come to discover every good thing there is to have in Christ. And that's what we want. And that's why we pray for our young people. And that's why we're going to pray for our young people today who are on campus uh, facing all those things they face. That's why we're going to pray for those people that work in those difficult and spiritually hostile places like our schools and halls of government or 
police officers and our military that face difficult things every day, we're going to pray for them and uh, pray for a revival that they can actively share their faith by living it out, cause questions to be asked, and then come on and then from that experience every good thing there is to have in Christ. It's not enough just to acknowledge God, which I was really good at, but it is something else to actively share our faith and then come to experience all that comes with it, the power and the presence of the creator of the universe within us uh, to accomplish things in his name. Amen? Amen. So let's pray for those young people. Uh, let's also continue to pray for Piper Morris and her son Grayson. Uh, Megan Meeks, as we're waiting for answers regarding her liver and kidney issues. Continue to pray for my friend Jimmy Maldonado and his brother Rodney. Ronnie, um, Darlene Carroll, Kathy Duncan, who's waiting for surgery on May 19th, uh, their mutual friend Ralph, COPD, uh, all of our friends that are battling cancer, Tim Burns, uh, Joyce Perry, who uh, is in hospice and expected to go home anytime soon, pray for her and her husband, the retired pastor, Harold Perry, Tammy Monk-Voschel, Bill Trollinger, who's still working through chemo, Becky Valadez, who I think is beginning her last week of radiation, Rachel Gilbert's update was at the end of March, she completed 16 rounds of chemo and now is ready to begin 25 days of radiation. So uh, be in prayer for Rachel Gilbert, her husband, Rodney, uh, Colby Van Dyke, continue to pray for him. And of course, Emmanuel, continue to pray for Vision Paradise, our Spanish congregation and our Armenian ministry that we're hoping to start very, very soon. One of the things that was so interesting yesterday is we did have an Armenian family walk in. And of course, I know they were disappointed because I didn't speak Armenian, but uh, pray for us because we want to find the right ministry because the field is ripe for a harvest. Uh, pray for all of our in-person Bible studies and different things that we do, as well as this ministry, our noon Bible study run by the Bills at church. You get a free lunch if you go to that as well as everything else. And thank you again for your steward, for support, as we have proven to be good stewards, but uh, we recognize as we meet our obligations, uh, you know, the buildings and grounds of a building 100 years old, uh, we, we want it to make sure it's ready for the group that is going to be preaching the gospel there uh, in another 100 years. And uh, I'm all for Jesus coming back, but until Jesus comes back, we keep preaching the gospel and not looking for an escape. Let him come back in his good time. Uh, and so we remain optimistic. So let's pray, and then we'll get you out of here. Uh, Lord, we do thank you for today, God. Thank you for loving us, for blessing us, Lord. We pray for our young people, Lord. Uh, you're the Lord of hosts, Lord. Do battle in your realm to minimize and eliminate the influence uh, in our realm on our young people, Lord. Let them see the fraudulence of this world. Give them discerning eyes. Uh, let your spirit help them to discern and uh, see the fraudulence of this world and recognize the truth there is in you. Let us live out the faith uh, appropriately with integrity before them. Uh, Lord, we pray this also for those teachers, police officers, soldiers, and those who work in the halls of government, Lord, uh, that know you. Give them courage, Lord, to actively share their faith by living it out and experience every good thing there is to have in you. Uh, Lord, we pray for Piper Morris and her son Grayson. We pray for Megan. We pray for Jimmy, his brother Ronnie. Pray for Darlene, Kathy, Ralph. Pray for those battling cancer. Uh, Tim Burns, Joyce Perry, Tammy Monk, uh, Voschel, uh, Bill Trollinger, Becky Valadez, Rachel Gilbert as she starts her, her 25 days of chemo. I think she started yesterday. Lord, be with her. Uh, be with Colby Van Dyke and Emmanuel as they all battle this disease and the treatment thereof. We pray for Pastor Walter, Pastor Francis Edgar, and the group at Vision Paradise. Lord, we pray for the family that visited us yesterday, Lord, and we pray for an Armenian ministry that is like-minded in the gospel being preached uh, at 505 South 6th Street. Lord, we trust in your providence for that. And Lord, we just pray for uh, all the people that are in our church, Lord, and help us to be good stewards of our time. Uh, we thank you for our, our leadership and those that, that just do great things in, in your name. Lord, we pray for Granite Ridge Home Camp, Shay and, and, the, and the staff up there, Lord. We pray for new staff people because they're always shorthanded, especially as we head during the summer. Uh, Lord, just let, uh, let there be a blessed summer there uh, this year. Uh, be with us for our kids camp, Lord, the sign up for prayer coverage. Uh, CIT is coming. Lord, uh, give us a blessed summer as we go forward in you with Outsiders and that program. Lord, just thank you again for loving us and uh, find us faithful today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right. Wow, 20 minutes, guys. I do apologize. Mariah, is that an amen for my arrogance, confidence, cockiness? Uh, or is that maybe uh, an amen for the message? You got to specify because uh, I did say... <laughs> I did say people do think I'm cocky and I didn't want to see 80 amens in the thread. All right. God bless, folks. I'm going to download this and I'm going to post it to the various sites, Instagram and everything. As you're watching this later, many of you do. I know you guys can't always watch us in the morning. And uh, and if I'm not on at 7, I know fewer people. Kelly McCoy, thank you always for clicking on. But when you do watch us, if you could just leave comments, likes, hit the share button because we, we have noticed that we, we, we have dipped in the algorithm a little bit. It's the nature of the beast. Uh, if you could help us there, we'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, folks, God bless. Take care, and uh, we will see you manana.